Okay, Jermaine, I'm just going to read through your assignment and uh, with the video paused at any time I want to give you some feedback, I'm going to start the recording again and give you some of what I, what I was thinking when I was reading it, okay? Okay, for situation number one, this is a great image. Your free body diagram is also good. I would just remind you that it's general convention to draw your arrows right to the center of gravity and not just at the edge of the object. Um, you've given a good description and correctly identified that this would be a, a good application, or sorry, a good image of Newton's first law where the net force is equal to zero. Okay, again, uh, this is a great video that you took. Thank you for submitting it that way. Your free body diagram is correct, <coughs> although it should, if it was to match with the image, I suppose that it would be pointing in the opposite direction, um, but it's, it's fine the way it is. And your application here explaining that it's Newton's first law again, um, and that the net force is equal to zero. Um, I think it would be good if in your description um, that you explained how these, which forces balance off, that gravity balances normal force and the applied force balances off with friction. Okay, this is a great video um, and I'm glad you actually drew two free body diagrams to indicate um, bef when it was being accelerated, in that case the acceleration is bigger than friction, and then when it was released, release, so friction is the greater force. Um, and again, we see this is a direct connection to Newton's second law. Um, the only thing I would recommend is if you were to do this question in more detail, you could discuss what factors would affect the acceleration. So uh, how hard you pushed it, as well as how heavy the chair was. If, for example, someone was sitting in the chair, that would make a whole big difference on how it accelerated. Okay, this is a cool video. The free body diagram is mostly correct, although in general, we can eliminate this uh, normal force altogether because we would assume that if gravity is pulling it down, then the person is both applying a force to overcome gravity and applying a force to accelerate it. So we really don't need the normal force at all. Uh, but your description <laughs> is correct. Okay, this is a great video here um, demonstrating the exact concept, um, although maybe you're a little too angry. But <laughs> as it is, one of the things that I would suggest is the fact that <coughs> excuse me, these two objects be drawn um, completely separately, not in one diagram, but in two separate diagrams, because you've accurately, accurately drawn the free body diagram of the bag, normal force up, gravity force down. Probably this should be a tension force because, oh no, it's not a hanging bag, it's just sitting on the floor, so normal force. And the fact that there's an applied force being pushed on the bag. Now here's the mistake. If you were going to draw a free body diagram for the hand, you should not have an applied force in this direction because the force is actually acting backwards on the hand. The hand punches the bag in this direction, the bag pushes backwards in this direction. Okay, I've just finished reading through your uh, three laws and how they relate to technology, society, and the environment. I think they're, they're excellent. So Newton's third law pertaining to um, traveling in outer space, uh, then the, sec the first law pertaining to transportation safety, and then uh, the second law as it pertains to energy generation. So these are all excellent links. I'm going to take a little bit of time now and fill out the rubric and send you this video. Okay, thanks.